Manual perineal protection with two hands. Up to 60 to 80 percent of women delivering their first child need suturing due to perineal tears. Although causes of perineal tears are complex, this animation will teach you a technique to support the perineum by easing the pressure exerted by the baby's head on its posterior part, thus reducing the incidence of perineal tears. Before doing so, we will show you the different degrees of perineal tears which we try to avoid. First degree perineal tears are superficial. They involve only perineal skin or vaginal mucosa. Second degree perineal tears affect superficial perineal muscles and fascia. Superficial perineal tears rarely cause serious long-term problems, but they may cause pain and discomfort immediately after delivery. Deeper perineal tears, such as third and fourth degree perineal tears, involve the anal sphincter and they are the most important risk factor for female anal incontinence. They may also cause long-term pain, discomfort and sexual dysfunction. You can prevent perineal tears by providing manual protection with two hands during the end of the second stage of labor. This technique aims at controlling the delivery of the baby's head with the left hand while supporting the posterior perineum with the right hand at the same time. Note the birth tendon's position. She or he must be able to reach the woman's perineum in order to provide an adequate support. The woman in labor can preferably choose the back position or the side position. Now we will teach you the grip. Always remember to explain to the woman why you apply this support technique. Place the left hand on the baby's head to slow down and control the speed of the protrusion of the head. Place the index and thumb fingers of the right hand on the lateral parts of the perineum and squeeze towards the center in order to ease the pressure on the posterior perineum. While the left hand slows down the speed and controls the delivery of the baby's head, the right hand supports the perineum in addition to controlling the delivery of the head. Remember to place the middle finger so that it may grip the baby's shin. During this stage and when the head is crowning, it's important to instruct the woman not to push but breathe superficially with open mouth. The head is delivered slowly supported by the left hand while the right hand holds the perineal skin firmly together. The anterior shoulder is delivered gently first, then the posterior. Remember to support the perineum in the same way while delivering the posterior shoulder. Note that in normal delivery episiotomy is performed only when indicated, as during deliveries with vacuum or forceps. It's not performed routinely. To sum up, we will show you the new support technique in one go. Place the left hand on the baby's head to slow down and control the speed of the delivery of the head. Place the index and thumb fingers of the right hand on the lateral parts of the perineum and squeeze toward the center in order to ease the pressure on the posterior perineum. While the left hand slows down the speed and controls the delivery of the head, the right hand supports the perineum in addition to controlling the delivery of the head. Remember to place the middle finger so that it may grip the baby's shin. During this stage and when the head is crowning, it's important to instruct the woman not to push but breathe superficially with open mouth. The head is delivered slowly supported by the left hand while the right hand holds the perineal skin firmly together. The anterior shoulder is delivered gently first, then the posterior. Remember to support the perineum while delivering the posterior shoulder. Note, although gloves are not shown in this animation, to wear gloves is mandatory for all health personnel assisting deliveries.